Are you ready? Can crush us. It don't really get no better than this. The podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need and and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. That's the loudest you've been since I started talking to you, so the girlfriend must have woke up. No, she's not. Or you I just know. woke her up. <laughs> Welcome to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. I am Mark the Mark. That is Sir Michael Jenks. Thank you, Can Crusher Nation, for returning and listening to what will be a train wreck. And Jenks and I talked a little bit before, and very minuscule today, before we started recording, we know we're going to get hate. Yeah. Bring the hate, bring it, bring it, bring it. We'll defend ourselves, but uh, yeah, but we'll get to yeah. that. <laughs> we'll get to the hate-filled comments. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to the hate-filled comments, and I'm all right with them. Keep them coming, especially next week. Jenks, I do have something to tell you that uh, oh. I didn't want to tell you prior to hitting the record button. Oh, boy. What do we got? But we're going to wait on that as well. How was your week, buddy? Oh, you can cliffhanger me like that? How dare you? Uh, my week was good. Uh, a lot of trying to catch up on things at the house, getting things done, uh, trying to make grass grow. It's been. Uh, <laughs> Is there a I, dance I, for that, by the way? Uh, no, I'm just going to pretend like I'm the wizard Chris Jericho and make it magically come out of the ground somehow. But no, uh, the week's been good. Just waiting on some news at work and just kind of pile food. There's not much. Not, I don't live an exciting life like you do, Mark. So there's not much going on. I did buy. I I don't know if I mentioned this on the exciting podcast life. last week. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, mine mine's not that exciting, but I did get NBA 2K 22 for 10 bucks. You did. Uh, and it's uh, yeah, I can't remember if I mentioned that or not on the podcast, but that my, that was probably the uplift of the week was uh, starting an expansion league. With six expansion teams and hoping for the best. So we'll six. see what happens. You added yeah. six new teams to the NBA, which is already <laughs> overloaded with Loaded. talent. Yes. So what it ends up being is they give you the option to add six more teams to the league in the new game. And you can either create them, get a community creation of logos in that, or they have predetermined ones that you can bring in. So I ended up doing that and uh, yeah, started the league with six new teams and did a fantasy draft after that. Do you? Can you tell us? Because I I created two when I was playing back in I don't know, maybe January or so when I was on the NBA part of my sports playing mm-hmm. video games. I created Pittsburgh yeah. and I think Portland got another team. Okay. I'm not sure. Maybe it was somebody in the West because. Every, they had everything for Pitt that I just stole it from the community creations. You know, they're the Pitt Panthers, yeah. they're playing into Peterson, da 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 all of that. So I'm like, well, then, that's as easy. Yeah. Yeah, I did. So I built, I took Seattle, I did the Kraken. I really like the Seattle Kraken name for the NHL, so I took that. But I did a different color scheme for them. Uh, Pittsburgh, they have preloaded as an option in 22. So you could do the Pittsburgh Force what they call yep yeah so i didn't use them i did there was a buffalo team uh buffalo beast i think either was a community creation or they had it uploaded there's a san diego surf that i included uh i'm trying to remember i'm all tampa Bay storm or sharks or something like that attack or something and then there's a couple other that i can't think of off the top oh cincinnati lions i think is a pretty loaded one as well so those are, are four of the six. Are you Tampa Bay? No, I'm Seattle. Oh, you're Seattle. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. I went. I, I created the Seattle team, and I'm using the Seattle team because I like that one. I always wanted Seattle to have a basketball team back, so I usually start with Seattle as my expansion team and go from there. Tampa Bay, I added because I like Tampa Bay, and they're god awful. <laughs> um, actually, I'll, I'll say this because I misspoke before. I didn't do a fantasy draft, but you do your expansion draft, and then I did a bunch of trades to get better talent. But uh, basically, Tampa. Buffalo, Cincinnati, they're kind of bottom of the barrel. Not, they're barely, they're not even close to the top right now. So They're the they're D League. Yeah. yeah, they're very much the D League. Okay. Not quite G, but they're D. So. <laughs> okay, because G League's got some talent. They do, yeah. The G League's got some talent, but yeah, they're the D League for sure. So uh, eventually they might improve, but yeah, right now not not so much. So so. NBA has been your week, which no harm, no foul on that. Uh, I've been on that that road as well. Yeah, and actually, I haven't. I only got to play once this week, so it's really I've just been too busy doing everything else. That the one night I had time to play, I just played and just went for it. So that was it. But that, that was with me too. That was with me too. Yeah. I played essentially just two baseball games in my season this week. And they were both yesterday in between a child getting off of work and a wife coming home from work just so we could go, you know, get ice cream together or something. Uh, a child. I only have one. What the fuck am I saying? I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My six of them across America. No. Um, yeah. I, I played two games just because Monday – my baseball game was late, so I got home from work, and it took me – and we have a smaller yard, but – it, it took me, you know, an hour to cut one side because it was my first cut. Um, we have a manure factory in the two dogs that help where they go just grow grass. Like, I should start cutting it and sending it to football fields or something. Because it send is it to my house. Yeah, yeah, send it to your house <laughs> because it is great. It's great grass. It, it grows. It's thick. It's, you know, plentiful. It's a bitch to cut the first time. So I have to stay on top oh, yeah. of that. My goal is to cut the grass again maybe Tuesday. Maybe because there's a lot going on again this week. Some stuff I can't yeah. say. Just know uh, the wind of change is coming. And I'm excited <laughs> about that. That's a great song, by the way. Right? That is a good song. Yeah. yeah. I like it. And again, baseball. Baseball out the wazoo because next Monday is the start of the playoffs, essentially. They they may tweak something here or there, but essentially the next Monday is the start of playoffs. A lot of teams played double headers this week, and we were there. So, yeah, I napped heavy and hard when I got home at night. You did what you could. Yeah, we could. Where you could, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's the only thing you can do because you're living such a busy life now, Mark, that you can only get sleep when you can, and you got to move forward with it. It's not, it's not busy. It's not. I, well, I make it. It's not. Bu- it's just. I, I, I love doing the games. Not yeah. more for practice or anything like that. I really do them because I think for a while uh, across the board, and I could get knocked on this if the wrong person hears it, but I, I'll say it anyway. I think the kids took it on the chin that they didn't get a lot of notoriety and they didn't get a lot of publicity. So if I can do a game that I have to travel maybe 15, 20 minutes to get to the next one five minutes before it starts. I think it's for the kids. That's what local radio yeah. to me is to yeah. give them their props and dues too. And so grandma can say, Hey, little Johnny or little Julie got their name on the radio. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's fair. And that's kind of, that's, I didn't mean busy in a bad way. I mean, no, no, no. I know what you say like Keep yourself going and you jump them from thing to thing but i mean it's really admirable that you're doing it for the kids and doing it for them because sometimes they're the forgotten players of this whole thing even when you think about high school sports people don't think about the kids themselves they think about the teams and how they're doing and they they can be kind of hard on them so it's good to show them that show that uh give them the spotlight a little bit yeah it out. yeah so that's been my week uh a little bit of change coming this week. I get to sleep in the next two days, but that's nice. it could be a downfall because <laughs> I'll be in a pool with no water for the next two days for eight straight <laughs> hours, both days. 
Uh, are you excited about it or not? Well, it's going to thunderstorm in our neck of the woods, so I'm not sure if I'm excited about it tomorrow. Waving a power washer metal wand around in a thunderstorm in a pool that is essentially a conductor anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, I've heard that if you stick your ass in the air, you're fine. So just remember that little tidbit. Uh, my ass is always in the air. It's big enough. So <laughs> I'm good to go then. I'll just wear my Crocs. If I wear my Crocs on a uh, liner, I should be good, right? That would be perfect because they're all rubber. Right. right. Just rubber anyway, so you're good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. Uh, yeah, other than that, that's our weeks, essentially. Uh, slow, painful weeks for both of us. Nothing <laughs> exciting going on. I do want to tell you... Uh, apologize for no spotlight this week because of scheduling. I had a, a short window to get somebody in this week because of what they're, so it was a um, tag team, mixed tag team, maybe coming on. They're back on the schedule for down the line, so don't worry. Uh, I'm not going to ruin it. They said don't don't announce anything. Just tell them what's up. Half of that Half of that couple got called to work. And, yeah, I'm like, mm. all right, Wrestler X, this is when I can give you this this hour and a half, two hours to do it. They're like, yeah, that works perfectly. We don't have anything going on. Da, 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 da. I'm coming home getting set up, and they're like, oh, I just got called to work. I'm like, couldn't you tell them you were going to be on Can't Crushers Wrestling Podcast? And we can't <laughs> do <laughs> So that's why no spotlight this week. Um, I hope you guys went back and listened to some of the older ones that maybe you, you missed throughout the years or just getting caught up on other things. It's always nice to give a little buffer week, too. Um, but there will be one this week as I'm recording it essentially right after we get done recording the show. More to come as there is... I put that I put that uh, little post out on all our social medias. Just thinking, okay, June's a little weak. Uh, so to speak, in our schedule, well, that bit me in the ass, Jenks, because now <laughs> we're a little heavy. We're a li- I should have just let it ride out and see how it would have went. Now we're a little heavy. So No, but you know what? It's Keep great. yourself busy, yeah. getting them all in, and yeah. even so, you might end up with some in the back here just so you have them lined up for a few weeks out. Yeah, especially if it's like a legend that, you know... Uh, can sit in the hopper for a little bit, drop it, or a young indie star that doesn't care when it comes out, if it's, you know, there's not a lot of self-promotion of an event in it or something like that, it can always just hang out, but yeah, yeah, so. Nice. So the, well, looking forward to them. The news is, uh, next week, they're unless Jenks and I can figure something out to record Friday, I'll put it this way. There probably won't be a weekly show next week because okay. Mark has been called by two to one media out of mm-hmm. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and asked to be a cameraman for Saturday and Sunday's IWC shows. Whoa. Yeah. Out. Moving up to the big time now. Right? <laughs> yeah. He. Jeremy Klingen Smith, who from Two to One Media, one of our great friends, has done a lot for the podcast, so on and so forth. Um, in a little bit of a bind, so he, he reaches out to maybe the lowest level he possibly could, and he's like, "Hey, Mark, no. I know you have a communications degree, you know how to run a camera." Da, 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 da. What are you doing next Saturday and Sunday? I said, "Well, nothing." He's like, "Do you want to help?" I'm like, "Yeah." So it's pretty cool. Uh, Saturday I'll go down. It's kind of a hardcore uh, event. Sandman's going to be there. Rhino's going to be there. There's going to be cage matches. There's going to be all this cool stuff in Rollister. So uh, get online. Check out IWC, uh, IWCnetwork.com, nine ninety nine a month. There's all that. Uh, you'll see my great uh, camera work. And then Sunday it's at the Brownsville Drive-In at 1 o'clock. Um, both of them aren't going to be live, but they will be back on IWC Network, real quick, because Jeremy's awesome with the turnaround. He's like, I came into a bind. There's a lot going on. Da, 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 da. Do you want help? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the bonus is I also get to camp out on a couch at uh, the English professor's house, who I haven't seen in a couple months, too. So after the event, 
they'll be sleeping, but I'll just break into the house and at least get to go out to breakfast with them Sunday before I get back on the road. But yeah, yeah. I'm going to be a cameraman next week. That's fantastic. So two things I took away from that is a, you're breaking and entering into somebody's house at night. So I want, I'd love to see you crawling through a window at some point. I have a key. And I two, already have a key to this house. So it's no, not no, that much breaking. It's just entering. I'm, I'm imagining you crawling through a window now. Okay. And two, I'm, I can't wait to see this exceptional camera work that we're going to, that we're being promised here. You know, I'm going to be anal retentive about it. You know. I know you are. I know you are. That's why I'm saying that. Pausing the match. Wait a minute. I didn't like that <laughs> shot. Can we do it? <laughs> come back. Come back. I got to zoom out a little bit. <laughs> my first and only two gigs for them because Mark is stupid. But yeah, I'm excited think, about that. That's good. You should be. That's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm happy for you, man. Thank you. a good time. It should be. Nice. It should be. Uh, just so you know, I'm drinking an iced latte. The fam got up uh, this morning and went to Dunky. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. So I'm excited. Uh, I'm drinking a lemonade. So that's where I'm at. I'm on a major lemonade kick uh, already this year. Sheets has this little lemonade called Milo's. Um, I don't know if you know of that brand. I've heard of it. Yeah. It is awesome. Favorite lemonade out there right now. It would, that's not a promotion. That's not telling you to go buy it. I hope you don't buy it because it'll be more for me. <laughs> uh, well, and once you open up the parts unknown, I think I'm going to go buy some. Yeah. After this. So we'll see what happens. I haven't tried their stuff yet. Uh, right now I'm having a minute made. But usually usually this time of year I get the hankering for uh, lemonade that or squeeze stuff from fairs. and Yes. Like, Where they throw uh, the whole lemonade right parts. in it then? Yeah, the whole damn lemon's in it. You get a seed occasionally. It chokes you, but it's good. But yeah, it's usually a good time. So I get the hanker and start about mid-May. Yeah. Uh, one more drink I want to tell you guys about. Uh, you know, we crush cans here sometimes as well, drinking uh, alcoholic beverages. Jenks, get the, po- the, the truly poolside pack. Holy Ooh. moly. Mojitos, a peach mango watermelon something or other and then a pina colada yeah my sister drinks those religiously and she was hyping up i didn't know it was called the pull pack but she was hyping up uh which one did you just said mojito yes um she didn't like the pina colada one oh she's she liked crazy. the other three. Oh, she's not she's not a pina colada girl oh well that's it then. Not, yeah so, it yeah. is a distinct taste I will tell you, I've never had a Trulies outright before, so I'll have to try them. Uh, my go-to summer beer right now is always Summer Shandy by Line and Krugel. So I know it's not the same as Trulies, but that's one I can down on a regular, and it tastes like lemonade. Yeah, it does. It does. So, that, that's my beer to go to as well. Uh, this, yeah. this is just not, you know, it's a seltzer. It's not a beer. No, no, yeah, yeah. No, I completely understand. I was just saying, I, I should get into the seltzer game more. I just don't. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just I forget about it or what, but they can mess you. Pack. They can mess you up, man. I'm telling you, it's just you're drinking water and you're like, "Oh, this is really good." It sounds like what I would call a danger drink. It is. It, yeah. it really is because you think you can pound one right after you're done cutting grass, and you're like, "Holy shit!" Uh, there was five percent alcohol in that. I'm lightheaded from going up and down a hill that's at a 150 degree, you know, incline. I'm gonna pound one of these. In the shower, and they're like, "Oh, you just get the shakes real quick, and yeah, it's almost like a, I don't know, I, whatever." Well, it's uh, the shower beers are always the best. Shower so beers are the best, especially after yard work. Shower beers are amazing. Yeah, I, I have to tell you this now. Uh, Kimberly woke up, and I just got the look of shower beers. She hasn't <laughs> had one apparently. Wait, so what? That conversation. Apparently, she hasn't had a shower beer, so we might have to have this conversation after I'm done here. Well, then she needs she needs to go back and listen to Moochie's 40 Year Dash, where that was <laughs> one of his life goals of listening, doing that a shower. Right. That was a Moochie life goal was having a shower beer for the first time. Yeah, so, we'll have to revisit that. But oh, the poor girl. So, oh. so Jenks, let's get on topic. Did you have any um, big things you want to talk about before we dive into AEW? And or WWE a little bit because it was a, it was. Let me say it this way: 
besides more sunny stuff, and I don't mean like sunny outside. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sunny, the former professional wrestler, now turned convict. Um, there, there really wasn't anything that I had to you know stamp my thumb of approval or anything on saying, man, we really need to talk about that. This was a whole hum week. It really was. Uh, it seemed to calm down a little bit. Uh, nothing too crazy. But you're right. The sunny stuff was the only thing that was came out. And at the same time, it's like, eh, we could rehash it to death if we want. But kind of just leaving it where it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although I will say, I did see yesterday uh, Virgil apparently at stage two colon cancer and is dealing with dementia. I don't know if you saw that. So that is something... Uh, unfortunately for him, so well wishes for him uh, I, and his recovery of that. I did see, well, I knew about the dementia from, I think he posted that like a couple months ago or yeah. a couple weeks ago or something. But yes, actually I did right before bed, I saw that he he said about stage two uh, colon cancer. So yeah, thoughts and prayers out for him. And I, I know he, he, he struggles for money and he's yep. been rough on the society of wrestling you know he really has but come on folks if, if you have it um any little bit to help him out his paypal is i actually posted on can crushers wrestling podcast the facebook page kind mm-hmm. of the link that well the story that has a link in it of, about his stage two and everything so if you can help out really do um yeah if you if you're financially able to send them five bucks 20 bucks whatever cool man that means a lot as much as we make fun of virgil um he's a huge part of my wrestling childhood even up until now you know yeah starting with million dollar man being the the joke in the nwo making uh pop-ups here and there not invited pop-ups just popping up up. because that's what (laughs) virgil does uh, he's a huge part of my wrestling life. So, um, Mike Jones, his name is, uh, yeah. send him some love, at least keep him in your thoughts and prayers. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, hopefully all goes well with him and, you know, it's unfortunate, but you start seeing this more and more as we go forward. Uh, these health issues start coming out. Yeah. You know, outside of that, Mark, I don't know. Did you see book broke this morning about a fan getting involved in independent wrestling show. I did. And, it, yeah. I, I think it goes back to our age old conversation. Fans just need to stay the hell out of it. But did you see the, did you see the clip? Like the bad guy, I don't even know who it was or I, I, you know, it was, uh, I have a, the article pulled up right now. It was IWE pro wrestling show out of Augusta, Georgia. So the, the heel flipped the guy's hat. If yeah. you if you have been to any wrestling show, I've had my hat stolen, taken in the ring, da, 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 and I'm very particular about my hats. That's one of the big things that you can rip my shirt off, you can punch me, do it. I really the hat is like me, but I know it's coming back, and if it's and or damaged, you know most promoters are good. Here's twenty bucks. I'm sorry this happened. Da, 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 da. They'll take care of you. He So he had his hat flipped, and this monster then just headbutts the talent. Yeah. All props to the talent for fucking punching him in the face. Good for him. As soon as you initiate, you have to defend yourself. Right. And I was more than more, more than accepting letting him retaliate and, you know, defend himself in that aspect. No one should do that. It's a hat. Yep. And I and this just goes back to fans who sometimes do not know the limits that they need to impose on themselves. Yeah. Dude, you had your hat tipped off at the show. So now you're actually part of the show. Maybe the yeah. talent like focused on you is like, all right, this is a guy I'm gonna yell at while I'm in the ring because I always want to be that guy. I want to be made fun of from you know the heel when he's in the he or her or in the ring. And that's cool because that for that one match, then you're part of the show. And doesn't all all fans want to be just for that moment part of the show? Now you are trying to be the show, and yeah. you are not. You are a piece of shit. 
They're just trying to show up the show more than actually be a part of it. And some people, some fans are just like that, though. They don't want to be a part of a show. They want to be the main attraction. They want to put themselves in that position, which is really disappointing. Well, go to school then. Go to wrestling yeah. school. Show that exactly. you can do it. Yeah, exactly. Then you can get your time in the sun. Don't injure or try to injure talent because I don't know why, because you want to be a big shot. But, yeah. Yeah. Worthless human beings in this world. Yes. I, I will could anytime a fan crosses that line, um they lose my respect. And Agreed. unless it's a you know, plan gimmick that, you know, somebody's coming in, but then you know at, at some point. Like the security is put in on it and the, you know, the wrestlers put in I like the whole earthquake thing and all of that when he came in. Yeah. You know then. But when you have everybody to surround him just stop. I hope he's not mm. allowed back there. I I, I just I, I said this a couple times on Spotlight's and on this show, Jenks. Uh, being down in OVW, being in IWC, uh, any place that you know I've gone, uh, they're like, "All right, come on, follow me." Until I get that, come on, follow me to you know go look at the broadcasting table, go look at this, go get that. I stand there like a a, a normal fan, an idiot, waiting them. And they have to, it, because I was down at OVW, and I'll say this again a couple times, for a whole week. And I was like, hey, you know, you can go wherever you want to. All right, that's on Tuesday I could. I don't know what he has set up on Wednesday. Right. So he, he has to tell me that again on Wednesday. And then he has to tell me that again on Thursday, that, hey, you want to go look at the lights place? Go ahead. You know, you want to go look at the production? You want to go look at this? You want to go look at my office or whatever? Each day... He's got to tell that to me for me to feel comfortable to be able to roam around OVW. Exactly. Same thing with, you know, uh, any of the other places I've been. Because you don't know what they have uh, ready. That, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe the wrestlers aren't ready and you just can't be barging around. So maybe this guy at one point signed up for a meet and greet and it was in the ring so he now thinks that hey man i i did a meet and greet here six years ago they let me in the ring i paid my twenty dollars then i can headbutt the talent no it doesn't work like that it's an every day you have to get the acceptance into the business exactly and again this is just some guy that has his he had it could have been a meet and greet it could have been a tour of the facility so he got a big head about it, and he was just taking it too far. And Or he just thought, you know what, I, I can take this guy, how dare he, and he's trying to get in on the action, which is just as stupid in his own right, because I think his name was Joe Black as a wrestler. Uh, he could definitely take this guy down oh. and knock him around. That, yeah. People are just ridiculous. I, but you're right. You need to be accepted and brought in. If you are not an actual person in the company, you have to be brought in every day and given that permission to go where you want to go within it and not overstep those bounds. This guy's for sure going to be barred from this arena and probably any show related to this wrestling organization going forward. I hope you said Augusta, Georgia. I, I hope it's yeah. all of Georgia. I mean, his name's out there yeah. now. I don't oh, yeah. I, without saying it or anything, but I hope they say, oh, uh, Bob Smith, he, he buy, bought tickets to Georgia Professional Wrestling East Coast or whatever because I'm trying to make up something that doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. he's not allowed to come. Yeah. This, yeah. His name's on the wall of shame now. Yeah. As it should be. No soup for you. No soup for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got the reference. I got it. All right. Uh, we didn't do our due diligence. I didn't do my due diligence last week. So let's do this a little bit longer before we dive into AE dubs and WWE. Guys, you know where to find us. We're all over social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Farmers only. Um, raging birds that are part of the government. Government. Yeah. yeah. Whatever the hell. Free singles. Yeah. You know, all of those. Who are there? Check us out. All of it is at CanCrusher69. Uh, cancrusher69 at gmail.com. That's our email. Drop us an email and we will uh, answer you back. Jenks and I are going to get set up. And with no show next week and then double or nothing, I'm thinking mid to late June, Jenks. So this is a call to action to all you Can Crusher Nations. We bring back a 
because there's always time. Let's do an ask can crusher. I was wondering when that was going to come back. I had thought about that actually last week. I'm like, I keep forgetting to ask you about it. I'm like, when are we going to do an ask can crusher again? Yeah. I, I think uh, mid, I mean, maybe we'll talk about it um, this week or whatever, but uh, definitely after double or nothing. Uh, so the, the the first week after double or nothing, scratch that week. But anywhere in that mid June, I think we're open to do that because nothing else is popping up that is going to be detrimental for us to cover. I don't think. Right. Yeah. No, I agree with that. So get the questions in there. Um, the hotline's always there for everybody but Cody Hetrick to use. <laughs> it's plastered. <laughs> it's plastered all over our socials as well. And you can find us on all podcast outlets like Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, and so on and so forth. It, it, it just Wherever you listen to podcasts, you're listening to the one right now. And you want to switch over to Stitcher? Cool. Do that. Just type it in. We're there. Uh, Jenks, I don't know if this is – I don't know how much of the technical stuff you do, but there's podcasting outlets out there that – really grab us each week that I've never heard of it, it like Martinez podcasting host. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but cool. Well, we're on another one, you know, Jenks listening to podcasts has all his favorite podcast. Is it the same way yeah. on the 40 year dash? It like more and more just kind of keep popping up that, I mean, you've heard of the big ones, but everybody's creating yeah. a podcasting network now. Yeah. And that's it. And, What's surprising is like I just pulled up the four year dash uh, statistics because we get listening platforms because we uh, distribute through Anchor. 10% of our podcasts are distributed through other areas, other podcasting networks. So, like Apple, Spotify, web browsers, Google Podcasts make up the other 90, but there's a 10% other that's just some random podcasting networks that they've added over the course of us being on there that they get added to. It, it just amazes me. I don't know where these are yeah, or what they are, but uh, hey, more than welcome. Yeah, thank you. Say, we're, yeah, yeah, we're not complaining. We're just saying thank you. Uh, if you're creating yeah. one to kind of take on Spotify, iTunes, iHeart, or any of those, cool. All you, sure. man. You you tackle it. We'll be on board with you, but thanks yeah. for picking us up. Support the little guys. So I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, call her now ball hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and his hooligans have. Uh, our discount code is can crushers, all one word, capital C and can capital C and crushers. You'll save 10%. Don't forget to check out our merch on our website, which is can crusher 69.wixsite.com backslash can crushers. Check out that, get some merch for you and, and do the, do the right thing. Represent. We want to represent you. So let's represent each other. Almost turned into a law ad there. <laughs> we want to represent you in this time of need. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know where the hell I'm going, but <laughs> Al Snow is coming right now to tell you about collar and elbow. And then when we come back, Jenks, do you want to piss him off or do you want to talk about WWE first? Uh, let's talk WWE first. We'll save, we'll, we'll leave the bitter taste in the mouth for the end. Nice. I like where you're going. We'll be back. <laughs> Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Hey, this is Jack Pollock, the IWC Hardcore Icon. You're listening to Can Crushers Podcast. If I like it, you should too. And welcome back to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. I'm Mark the Mark. That's Sir Michael Jenks. We're going to give WWE a little bit of the, the edge this week, aren't we? Or are we? I don't know. Yeah. We're both salty, I think. But in a good mood, I, salty. We're, yeah, we're good mood salty. Like a salted caramel, if you will. 
Uh, I think I think we gotta give them the edge just because of some things that happened on Dynamite that threw us off. But we'll get there. We'll okay. get there when we get there. You're taking a lot of shots already. 35 minutes yeah. in, you were probably drunk. Because I know <laughs> I said it three or four times. And yeah, it's funny that we say that. Jinx, that really just rolls off my tongue. I don't try to put them in anymore. At one point, I was trying to put them in. I don't now. They just come. I've. That's what she said. I have. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I have adapted your language now for that always happens to me now. Is We'll get there when we get there. During work meetings, I will say that. Oh, like, you were really? <laughs> so I'm like, God damn it, Mark. <laughs> Mike, we really need this uh, quota or this thing, this whole thing taken care of kind of by noon today. Sir, we'll yeah. get there when we get there. What? We'll get there. We'll get there when we get there. We'll speed this up when we get there, too, if we need to. <laughs> All right. So... And you've just passed out on the floor. Yeah. Uh, just listen to us while you pass out. Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> RKO, RK Bro starts off the show, and they essentially just said, hey, we're coming to SmackDown, which essentially told me that uh, Roman and the boys aren't going to be there on Raw. I did see that, though, that they were yeah. teasing, maybe no Roman, this, that, and the other thing. Okay. So you... Here's my bitches. This may be more of a bitch fest this week about wrestling in general. <laughs> you told us it was going to be tag team championship, you know, uh, undisputed title. Get all those. What's the word I'm looking for? Because now I'm flustered. Unification. Thank you. Unification yep. match at Backlash. And everybody was for it. You pulled the wool over our eyes. You throw in Drew. You throw in Roman. What happened happened. Drew's not going to be the next guy, from what I read, to take on Roman. Yeah. Roman's definitely not going to be at Hell in a Cell and or maybe Money in the Bank. You might not see Roman until SummerSlam, maybe pop up here or there, but he's going to do the Brock for a while. Yeah. So, and there's other matches that can actually main event Hell in a Cell which I'd more invested in than the tag team one. So why the hell not give the tag team at Backlash? I'm still on that because now it's been pushed to a different time. And if we just want to put all of WWE together, I'm all right with that. It's yeah, Friday. Fine. I don't, I didn't understand that either. It seems like they're continually pushing it off to push it off but i guess where are they going to go with it are we going to get a tag team hell in a cell at some point is that what we're waiting for just throw it all in the line inside the cell well I, with I, stay, let me stay let me stay there for a second yeah we're gonna i believe we're getting cody and seth hell in a cell oh, definitely right oh, definitely yeah so you'd need another one so to speak yep. i think yeah ronda doesn't have anybody defended against uh, she'll have somebody to defend it against, but it's not going to be Hell in a Cell level. Do we put the triple threat of the women in the Hell in a Cell? Of Bianca, Becky, and Asuka? I don't think. We, I mean, this the three of them are all just kind of starting off this three-person feud now. Yeah. See, if it was Bianca and Becky, maybe. Yeah. Yes. But... Because it's not, and it doesn't seem to be that way, I, I think those your your two matches are RK okay, Bro versus Usos and Cody and Seth. There's no other. I, I don't think there's any other. They're not going to put Ezekiel versus Kevin Owens in it. Not unless Ken's there too. Oh yeah, Ken's got to be there, and so does Elias. Right. Which I think they have the perfect opportunity to hire back Damian Sandman now to play Elias. I agree. Just saying. I think who, it's there. Who the hell is going to be Ken though? Maybe the guy that was uh, against Veer Mahal. But he maybe. looked like that a guy, weak Wardlow. He did look like a weak Wardlow. And maybe that's why they booked him against Mahal or Veer. Uh, Clearly. Yeah. I, I don't know. Now you got me fantasy booking in my head. And I don't know who it would be. What if they just put Sammy in like a bad wig and then put a shirt on him? 
with a pillow stuffed in there. That would work. Uh, don't dye his, his redness, though. <laughs> don't dye his redness. No, it, it's just like a wig or something. They'd figure it out. I know we haven't touched on this, and we called him the House of Edge for the longest time. <laughs> I really hate the name Judgment Day. This was one of your weakest pay-per-views in WWE history. It really, a lot never happened to Judgment Day. Right. So now you're going to pull it off a of pay-per-view. Anybody older than two-year-old batteries remembers that there's a Judgment Day pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Now you're just going to make Edge's faction Judgment. I hate it. I yeah, absolutely I hate it. If they would have just left it at, like, Judgment, I think would have been fine. But the fact that they're adding Judgment Day is just ridiculous to me. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Now, that doesn't mean I don't like the people that are entering the group, though. But is there a better name? What what else could they have named them, I guess? They're not going to call them Brood 2.0. I couldn't think of anything better to call them. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Well, it's stuck in our head now. That's why we couldn't think of yeah. anything. As soon as we turn yeah. off the podcast, we're like, how about yeah. this? <laughs> how about this? And we're like, oh, yeah. Well, why don't we say that on air? Yeah. Consumed by darkness? I don't know. Darkness Falls? Who knows? That's a movie about a killer tooth fairy. Oh, was <laughs> it for that one? Yeah. It was a terrible movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's a bad name. It, it is a bad name. It is. And we're going to get a, a six-person match, I believe, at Judgment Day. We're going to get Liv engulfed in this again. Yeah. Because Rhea just beat the hell out of Liv again. And I put this, I'm like, oh, how Liv has fallen. Like, she... <sighs> She's a sacrificial lamb. Yeah. Yeah. Really has been. You know, the the universe wants her to get a title shot years ago. Doesn't get it. They push her up to give her title shots. I thought for a moment she might have sniffed it for a while just to get a change of direction there in the WWE. No, you thought maybe her and Rio were going to be tag team champions. No. Yeah. What does she need to do? Because look at the audience. They still love her. They do. There's live signs everywhere. WWE is taking live signs away and lives reaching out to the people saying, I'll make sure I'll buy you tickets next time you come around, this, that, and the other. Why? What is against Liv? I think they only have her in the position they want her is that lower, that mid-card talent that can push people to the top, which is absolutely ridiculous. I think Liv co- could be a top babyface in the company, but yeah. they just will not let her break that mold. And I don't know why. I have no idea why. But let me say this. As we know, this happens a lot around Money in the Bank where they're buried. Is she the underdog to get the Money in the Bank then? Is she? I, we're not making predictions. We're, we're a long way out, a month and a half or whatever. As of right now, is she your pick then for Money in the Bank? Maybe she could be. I, to be honest, I'm not leaning that way at this point. I'm not but, either. But to your point, though, that's what they do because who would have thought Nikki ASH would have won it last year? This is what they do. You're, you're right. This is what they do. They bury somebody down. They give them an undesirable gimmick or thing, and then they boost them right to the top. The only time they didn't do that in recent memory for me is Asuka when they had to give her the title. Yeah. But even then, it was that whole match was – questionable on its own right yeah that was horrible <laughs> <laughs> but they knew they knew going into it i mean come on i mean they, they knew they yeah, knew going but... into it all right this is what you're gonna do somebody um i'm not saying i'm using the word relevant because it's stuck in my head but somebody relevant has to be handed this title from becky yeah. it's not going to be you know it has to be a legit jane smith who, yeah, yeah. So it's got to continue, and we can build from there then of people that Asuka has faced and everything. I don't know. Um, I brought up that whole live thing because that's where they usually go. 
But I think long term booking, and I know WWE says they book a year out, and I still don't believe that at all. But I think long term booking, Liv's just not in it. That's it. Liv is just not in it. That have it be Becky, have it be somebody returns, that it continues to tweet that she can return at any time. Injuries take a while, this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. Bailey was who we're talking about. Right. Because there's there's a build-in with Bailey then to either of them, essentially. Or you just put a month of promos on somebody that was on SmackDown now switched to Raw this week. Maybe this is Lacey's time because she was in something big prior to pregnancy Took the year off for however long it has been, essentially a year. Um, maybe this is where we're going to get Lacey's a little bit of a push. It could be, but now they're turning her heel. So is that... <sighs> well, heel against know, Bianca would be perfect then. It would be, but I think to your point before, you mentioned about you're out burping. They definitely are not doing that. They're doing it by the seat of the pants. Right. And it seems to be uh, the day of that they're booking things. If not the match of. <laughs> yeah, right. WCW all over again. I don't know. Sorry, I, I took a, my vanilla latte break there. No, you, get, you drink up your latte. You do that. You, you're feeling bougie this morning. That's all I'm I'm very bougie this morning. I, I really am. Um, I loved the... I know we touched on it a little bit. I love the Kevin Owens, Ezekiel stuff with... Ken, I, I died laughing the whole time. It was so stupid, but it was so good. Like, that was just sprinkled in, and it's okay. If they do the same thing again this week, though, it's too much. Yeah. But see, they're hitting all the right notes with that. They are. KO and Ezekiel. I, I don't know why. and you're, It's the stupidest thing in the world, but it's working. I, now, I don't know. Mark, does it say that? Does it say something bad about the product, or does it say how good Ezekiel and I put air quotes on that and Kevin Owens are? Both. Both, yeah. Both. Because there's only yeah. one thing I'm watching Raw for right now. It really is Cody Seth. Yeah. I, I do no, love I what they're doing. Yeah. The rest they have to catch me on. And and KO and Zeke now caught me because I'm like, this yeah. is so stupid that it's funny. Because the RK, the RK bro and the Usos thing has now pissed me off that it's gone too far. Like, it should have already happened. In my thoughts on this, real quick, Go for it. that match is not going to end. It's going to end, but I mean, the titles are not going to be unified. You can't have all the titles on one brand, essentially. Because then the only thing that's going to be on Raw is the US title and the women's title. Right. The, well, and I think if I was USA, I'd be pissed. Yeah, I, I think to that point, if you're going to unify them, they have to be able to go before, between both brands. There's no way you can let that go. But Fox won't let that happen. Right. And that's why you're starting to see that. Oh, the the people from Raw can go to Fox, but the people from Fox can't go to USA and go to Raw. Because yep. if RK Pro shows up over there, they're not going to. Usos might not show up on USA, per se. Right. It's it's creating a weird dynamic between the two. It really is. It, it really is, and it's odd. It, like, there's really going to be friction. I, I I guess I'm saying because if you don't know the backstory about USA and Fox, people are like, why doesn't Roman, who is the champion, why doesn't he come to Raw anymore? Or if the Usos, why can't they come over? You know, why can't Ronda show up and say, Bianca, I want to punch you in the face? Yeah. She's essentially not allowed by Fox. That it, That's what it's broken down to. And well, that that's sucks. Exactly it. And that's it's where I think project. USA, I think, in time says, well, I know you've been with us for, what, 30 plus years now. Maybe you move on and you just put everything on Fox if you're going to be that way. Is that the direction they're going? I don't... I, but that's... I, as much as I hate to say this, what else does USA have? Why are you turning into USA just to watch NCIS or Cold Case Files or anything like that? 
Nine out of That's ten, it. the only time I watch USA is Mondays for Raw or, yeah. you know, taped. But, yeah. No, I agree because I don't remember the last time I've seen original programming on USA. No. It's usually reruns outside of Raw. Kelly, watch Miz and the Misses. Oh, that is on USA, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Other yeah, than so that. Don't... But it's WWE-related product. Right. Yeah. There's Wait. nothing out there. I, it, it's... It's almost like it's a dying channel. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, that that's raw. Essentially, the Cody and theory for the U.S. title. If you had a thought that Cody was going to win this or win the championship, <laughs> welcome to wrestling because yeah, <laughs> I knew going in Seth was coming out. So yeah, well, this was wrestling one hundred and one. Right, it's fine. It's, yeah, but it added more. It, it did. It added more. Cody essentially said, "I'm done with Seth. He hasn't done anything." Da, 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 da. Seth turned around and you know beats his ass. Now, now Cody's ready to fight him again. So, yep. SmackDown. RK Bro starts the show off again. All right, all right. It's the RK Bro week. I understand that. I do. Um. Uh, I think the bloodline should have started. We could have did the same thing at the end that we did, but I, I think bloodline should have called them out, saying, now you're on our show, bitches. We know you're here. I don't yeah, know. It, it almost feels like they should not have announced they were coming and did that. Right. And, like, just showed up. Like, have the Usos call out, bloodline call them out, make comments, and then just have RJ Bro hit out of nowhere. But... I don't know. It, it almost feels like they're starting to struggle to get it to the next step to try to get it to that final match. They're struggling with the booking of it. Yeah. Uh, however, though, uh, I'll agree with you wholeheartedly there. Adding Sammy into this is adding something. Um, yeah. Him being the locker room leader, wanted to be an advocate or whatever for the bloodline, wearing a bloodline shirt this week, I marked out. When's he get his ass beat? Because you know it's coming. I think he's the. I think he's going to be the bridge until Roman. Whenever if Roman steps away, he's the bridge, and then they will have him as a sacrificial lamb type thing, right? It it just feels that way, and it's not going to be by RK bro. I feel like the bloodline is going to just take him out, decimate him. Ten. Yeah, decimate him without without reason, just because he's trying to play the side and trying to. He almost is aligning himself with a more powerful faction without being aligned with them. So I think that's where we're seeing. He's going to get. He is going to get taken out at some point whenever Roman comes back out. Yeah, and I think that's going to be actually his first time you see him in the ring with them. He's going to continue yes. these backstage, uh, outdoors, wherever meetings with Paul. Him and Paul are going to be the ones. And he's really going to believe that Paul's telling him stuff to the bloodline. But Paul, we know, is never telling bloodline anything about this idiot. And he's going to interfere or something at one point, And then that's way he's just going to get washed away. Yeah, well, that's exactly it. it. It's almost like a mafia storyline at this point. It's full-fledged turned into that. Some guy thinks he has the end. Some guy thinks he's a made man. But at the end of the day, he's not. I'm trying to think of what, what is it, Goodfellas? Yes, With, uh, I believe so. Pesci. Yeah, he thinks he's a made man, and they ended up whacking him. Yes. When he thought he was made. So I, I, it just has that element to it. I couldn't. I struggled to think about it, think how I wanted to phrase that before. But yeah, it just has that made man uh, fullness to it. I like it. I, I, I like it. Um, rolling along. If you want to jump in ahead of anything else, um, Madcap Moss. And, and I, we'll talk about Rhonda because I have some more to say yeah. about that. So I'm not just ju- jumping over it. Madcap Moss actually getting some momentum rolling here. And I like that he said that we're going to get rid of belts or titles or however, because clearly we're not allowed to say belts in WWE, but we're going right. to get rid of WWE titles and make 
WWE suspenders. That would be fucking amazing. I would love that one time if we would win a championship. Any of them. Even if we turned the 24-7 into it. So you get him on a roll. He's he's taken out Corbin. He's won the matches. We, we're thinking, all right, this is over, said, and done with now. And now he's going to be on the shelf for a while. Because the Andre the Giant trophy weighs like a million pounds. He had it thrown on a chair, broke his neck, da 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 da, da all gimmick. Why do you take him off a of TV? This just feels like the Drew storyline from three weeks or three months ago or five months ago. What was it? January where they took Ish. Drew off? Yeah. Yeah. It, it just reeks of that. And I feel like we're going to see Madcap in like three weeks before Hell in a Cell. <laughs> Or two weeks, what is it, two weeks away? Two weeks away now. Sure. Uh, yeah, something like that. It's not on the that, schedule, but yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's not. I don't, I just don't know. It just reeks of not awesomeness, but reeks of we're rehashing the storyline that we had with Drew with these two guys involved back from January. Yeah. I don't know. Because there, there's no reason to take away his momentum. Unless there's a legitimate injury, and I don't think there's a legitimate one. They're just giving him two weeks off. So maybe he needs time off or something outside of wrestling, but I, I was a little disappointed. I, I was that. too. I was too. And I'm not a fan of the storyline, not a fan of either. But I'm like, what, what are you doing? What are you, why are you doing this to him? I, I, I don't know. He finally had something. I, Moss is it Moss is starting to get built back up. And actually I, I'm not a fan of the storyline, but I think Moss is kind of improving every week. So I want to see him get more and more so that he can keep rolling forward. But I don't know. For some reason they felt that this storyline needed this type yeah. of action. And I guess that's why we do this and we're not writers, because I, as a well, writer, I would want to explain more. Well, exactly. Uh, that's why we only write for AEW, apparently. Right. Um, but yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ronda comes out, and this is a big thing, and it's happened since Friday. Um, Ronda only calls it the SmackDown Championships. Not not the women's uh, championship. It's just the SmackDown Championship. Pat makes reference to it as well. Are, are we dropping the women and... Essentially, I'm all right with it because it's wrestling. Uh, we don't we don't need terms. We don't need you know. I I'm a strong advocate of that. Uh, a ton of women that I've had on the show like just to be announced as professional wrestlers, not women's professional wrestlers or anything. But this is causing some stink that, that it's just going to be the SmackDown Championship. Yeah, I'm all right with it. Get over it. Uh, I'm perfectly fine with it. Yeah. I, I... There's no issue here. None. We don't just it, we know that the women are fighting for it. We don't need to defend. We don't need to say it's that specific title. It's just called SmackDown title. Move on. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Yeah. I don't want to see Ronda do open challenges week in and week out like she did with her first title run. We've seen yeah. this exact thing. Uh, I will say, Raquel looked great. And she looked great in NXT as well. I don't know if Raquel should have been the first one. Because I, I think was... you were supposed to make Raquel... She's not a monster, but, uh, you know, a monster in the women's division. Feed her somebody else first. I was very surprised Raquel was the first challenger here. This did not... To me, this seems like you give Raquel... Three to four months get settled in on the roster, maybe even six, and you give it to her at like a bigger pay per view or an end of year pay per view. Give her a title shot, right? And then that way it seems like a mountain hurdle because I think that would have been the proper way to build up Raquel on the main roster. Build her up as, like you were saying, the dominant champion, feed her some opponents first, then have her and Rondi Ronda face. I'm thinking this could have been a Rumble match because I'm pretty sure Ronda's going to have the title till then. Oh, I am too. Been a, this could have been a Rumble women's title match, a SmackDown title match. But I don't know. I just thought it was too early to give Raquel the title shot right here. Yeah. 
have it be Shotzi or Aaliyah that just are out that because this all wrapped back around then in the backstage. Any of the three deserving as we look at it? No, none are deserving. But they're trying to make their name. I understand that. Yep. Uh, I think you've killed Shotzi. And I don't know if Aaliyah was there, especially with the whole 317 with Nat thing. I think that hurt her. I, I just think it could have been maybe Tamina shows up. Or I know she's on Raw. But I mean, somebody like that, that would have been fine. I just don't think, I just think you squashed a younger talent right now. And yeah. there there needs to be a build up and a a fracture from mentioning that Raquel lost to Ronda already again. Not again, to just to start over. Yeah, because that's essentially where we go. She goes right back down to the bottom. Is you he didn't beat the champ. You've lost some momentum here. Now you have to be rebuilt back up. So you have to start feeding Raquel some other people. I don't know. I just think it was a bad situation for everyone involved in the aspect of, yeah, hey, Kelly deserves a title shot. Yeah. But if you're going to build her up on the main roster for people that don't know her, you give her a little bit of time to build herself up before you just drop her into the pan and into the fire. Yeah. She could be your Veer Mahal on SmackDown. (laughs) She could be. uh, More talent, I feel like. But (laughs) yeah, she could be. Yeah. Veer does have a million dollar arm, though. He does have a million dollars. That's that's true. That is accurate. Other than that, I, I thought SmackDown was really weak watching it this week. Um, I don't know. You have anything else on SmackDown you want to bring up? I I said it was a blah yeah. week across the board, and I I think we were nice to WWE a little bit. We were. Uh, we were very nice to them. I I Kofi and that whole New Day and uh, whatever Sheamus' action is, I think has gone on way too long, too. But uh, yeah. It's way past due, but anyways. Yeah, well, nothing else really from my end. I'm, I mean, I don't know how Biggie. I mean, Biggie posts him doing fine, this, that, and the other thing. I don't know how long. Well, I mean, he's still months away from coming back. This cannot last that long. No, it, he did mention, though, that... His C1 vertebrae, I think it was C1, was not healing like they thought it was. So he's he's probably going to be on the shelf a little bit longer, if not at, come back at Ever. all. Ever, yeah. Ever. So, well, there's no way to keep it forever. Although it's WWE, so maybe I'll be surprised. I don't know. Yeah. I, it, this just needs to move along. Again, it's three yeah. against two all the time. Does the New Day ever get one up? I, I don't see it. I, I don't see it. If, if you're trying to build this threesome up of what are the East Side Brawlers? Is that what they're essentially? Good? Mm-hmm. East, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, break away. Go, go, go. Tackle somebody else. Just get, get Butch into. And I, I, I told you guys a couple weeks ago. I'm involved in this Butch thing, but him against New Day all the time. It's getting stinky. This is what happens when you only promote four tag teams in your entire division. And you only have four tag teams to lean on. The two programs are just the four teams fighting. And it feels like they're kind of treading water until the unification match. And then maybe they'll throw the East Side Brawlers or whatever they are into the title hunt. That's kind of what it feels like right now. Uh, if this unification does happen... And whoever wins it, RK or the Usos, if they don't keep those unified titles for a while, why are we doing this? Because we know Roman's keeping this for uh, essentially a while. Uh, We do. Both titles are on Roman for a while. There's not one person yet built up to even sniff him. Right. Cody's getting there. But it he this is going to be a long haul, I think. I don't even know if it happens at SummerSlam at this point now. I thought maybe, I, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Does it happen at SummerSlam? felt like it would happen maybe earlier, but I was thinking Money in the Bank or SummerSlam, but who knows anymore? Because yeah. I, I don't know how long Roman's going to be out for. Yeah, and that's, just, that's, the, that's the thing. 
you know, less TV time. So no TV time, how do you build, how does Cody and Roman come across each other? Roman can't come to Raw. What the hell does Cody have to go to SmackDown for right now? There's nothing built Cody, in. No, and he can't just continue, just go over there to screw over the yeah. bloodline or the Usos. I, I, can't, I went over sense. to see Graves. Nothing against yeah. Graves, but... It, yeah. It, it just doesn't make any sense. No. So a lot of questions happening in WWE. We'll continue to cover it and figure out what the hell is going on because... As we said all the time after WrestleMania, yes, WrestleMania is like the end of the year, end of the season thing, so stuff is getting built. This is like the first three or four episodes of something that you watch on Netflix now for the next couple months. You don't know where anything's going. You're just hoping for the best at this point. <laughs> you really are. How invested am I in, in the Yellowstone or in the <laughs> Breaking Bad or something like that? How invested can I get to get to the next you know, episode five, where the killing begins, or something. Exactly. Well, this is this is turning into a Marvel movie, a Marvel show. Is first three episodes are like, what is going on here? And then the fourth episode, it just hits you upside the head like a chair, <laughs> and then you, you're just disoriented going into five and six, and that's it. That's the end of the series. And you're like, it just got good. What just happened? Right. Exactly. So, yeah. I don't know. We're a ways away. I guess maybe we're only through episode, halfway through episode one right now. I don't know. I have no clue. Jenks, let's piss some people off. <laughs> let's take a break, collect ourselves, get anything we need in our cockles, have somebody come on and tell you that you're listening to Can Crusher's Wrestling Podcast, and come back and talk about AEW. The nation's going to hate us, I think. I think they might. Now, it's not all bad. Not all Just bad. One particular thing has soiled the entire week, I think, for us. I believe so. And we might be on the same page because we're yep. old school. We are old school and old men. So, Hey, it's the most wham faster jitterbug and fanny pack and bum bag and fanny pack kid Cal here when, well... You are listening to the Can Crusher Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to Can Crusher's <laughs> Law Office as we, uh, as we look to serve you, uh, your defense attorneys at large. Uh, we're Can Crushing here. Mark, we forgot something. Uh, apparently, there was a pay-per-view last Sunday, and it has led to Charlotte taking some time off. Did we really forget something, though? Because we kind of <laughs> covered everything. We yeah. didn't. We didn't talk about Bob and almost. Which okay, I don't think anybody cares. We didn't talk about this. We didn't talk about that. But we we gave the gist of what happened during backlash. And I let me preface this: it wasn't the worst show I've ever watched. But there was really only three matches I cared about, and I'm glad that they started hot. Uh, match. They went hot. Yeah. Uh, match. They the uh, and then they they brought it back around. So overall, the match, you know, middle middle of the bar, something like that. I was impressed about the Charlotte and Ronda match because it wasn't a match. It was a fight, and that's what it was meant to be. Yeah. Again, giving Ronda the edge, making her look strong. And I hate to say this, but it's completely true. Ronda's not ready for a match yet. Even Monday, yeah. when or actually Friday when we saw her, not matches. These are just fights for her right now. She needs to still get back into it before I think we see anything technical for her again. Um, but to touch on your point, yes, uh, Charlotte Flair has a broke, would they say radius? And then McAfee actually told us what the hell a radius is. It's your arm. Yeah, it's basically your arm, yeah. Yeah, so I have a... I have a radius sleeve, not an arm sleeve anymore. I have a radius, a radius sleeve. Okay. It, it sounds like a network at this point. So you have a radius sleeve to get different stations coming in for podcasting or radio. Right. So um, when you broadcast baseball, do you stick your radius up in the air to get the signal out? I do. I do. I have right. to. Yeah, yes, I have sir. to hold it up yeah. like a Verizon commercial. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah and then you got to keep moving it around every like 15 degrees at a time just to get, get the right signal. Yes. Uh, I'm all right the way that that match ended with her broken, air quotes, arm. Um, 
giving Flair time off. I, I posted it earlier this week on the Facebook as well, saying good that she's taking time off. Give, yeah. give her on to her dues. Let her do whatever she wants to do. Um, I don't know who they're going to bring up. We talked about that a little bit. But keep Flair away. Uh, Flair's also getting married soon. So congratulations, hopefully, when we see this actually happen, because we do forget, to her and Andrade uh, for getting yeah. married. Yes. Congratulations to them uh, for it. Yeah, I don't know. I think you're right about the Ronda thing. She needs to be in fights right now. I think until they have the right opponent in place to carry her in a match. Charlotte's talented, but I don't think she can carry talent in a match sometimes. Uh, you have to get in certain moves. You have to do certain things. I don't think she can carry talent in the match. Now, if it was, let's say, a Sasha, I think she could carry her in a match. Bailey could carry her in a match. There was different people that can carry the match to help Ronda get through it and be great matches. It, Charlotte's just not that one person for it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, all right, so that that's essentially our backlash. Uh, break down every match. No, it, it wasn't a pay-per-view that... Uh, and I don't I, yes, we did forget to talk about it. Transparent. As soon as we started talking about WWE, I, I hit notes and we went right to Raw. And Jenks, you didn't watch it all live, right? I didn't. Uh, no. Um, I had something come up in the middle of it. So I ended up watching it during the week where it could get fitted into the week. Uh, so, and honestly, I saw Cody Seth live. Then the other matches, I think I made it through partially through AJ and Edge. But, you know, for me, it began and ended with Cody and Seth. Yep. That was the best match of the night. It was fantastic. A um, lot better than the WrestleMania match. And the WrestleMania match was great in its own right, or very good in its own right. But that match was, very, was uh, excellent at backlash, WrestleMania backlash. So... But for me, after watching the rest of it, it was like, man, nothing compared to Seth and Cody. So I kinda, I'm kind of glad that I had that break in the action. Yeah, I wish I would have. I wish I, <laughs> I, I actually stayed up and watched the whole thing, and I'm like, why did I stay up and watch this? And, and <laughs> essentially, that's I, I keep going back to this, that I don't think Roman and or Drew needed to be part of that, and I think the main event, to keep people invested – should have been Seth and Cody. That was a pay-per-view made for them to main event. Could yes. they main event Hell in a Cell as well? Oh, hell yeah, because then there's a stipulation on. So that should be their main event as well. If you're building yes. Cody up to possibly be the one that takes on Roman, he needs to be there. He does. You gave us yes, the best match of the night, and then uh, you struggled to catch up with it. And you didn't. Yeah. And you didn't catch up with it. They didn't. No, they were light years behind in most aspects. I mean, there was peaks and valleys, but nothing, nothing really even kind of lit a candle in comparison to what Seth and Cody did. And again, it's because it's Seth Strick and Rollins and Cody Rose, and they know what they're doing. And they have great chemistry in the ring, dating back to even 2013 when they were fighting for the Rhodes family to be rehired in the company versus the tag titles in the Shield. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, before we get to AEW, did you watch Bar Rescue? Did you see Britain Adam Cole? Uh, I didn't watch Bar Rescue yet, but I did see they were going to be on it. Was it good? Um, it's actually on Paramount Plus right now, as it's in the studio. I watched it. Well, I taped it and watched it the day after. Um, they're used as their the spies. If you watch Bar Rescue, they're used as the spies. Yeah. They go in. Um. They're on it. I'll just put it that way. They, nothing crazy. It's just they're on the show. And yeah. essentially the the whole bar rescue itself, it's not one of the bad ones where Taffer just screams into people. He just it, – it's more lighthearted one. It's I, – I, I'm glad they attached Britt and Adam to this one. Otherwise, yeah. I probably wouldn't have watched this one. Yeah, because some of those get really just down and dirty. I remember yeah. when I used to watch it regularly. The one I saw was the bugs in the bottle. Mm -hmm. I think it happened several times before, but they, it was like a place in Austin. And it was just a trash place. And there was just bugs floating in a bottle and shit. And I was like, oh, good lord. Yes. 
I did it. Fuck. So yeah. So if we start a bar between me and you and the other co-hosts from the Forty Year Dash, one we don't yeah. know, we don't know the name, but Mookie's not a lot. Mookie's not in charge of the concept, by the way. Okay, I was gonna say let's delegate what the the, and then we'll get to AEW. This is yeah. another three minute little runoff. What would we do? Who would be the owner? Who would be the bar manager? Who would be like the bartender? And we'll have to hire a cook because I'm telling you, I'm not going to cook. And maybe somebody like publication marketing or something like that. Yeah, I marketing wise, I hear me out on this. Uh, if you haven't listened to Forty Year Dash, I think our man. Mucci that we brilliantly talk about could do marketing. He posts on social media a lot. You do too. So maybe you guys can cohort it or unless you want to be the bartender that greets everyone and all that. I don't want Mucci behind the bar breaking thing. So, uh, but I just, bar manager wise, I could see Cody or me doing it or you. Good Lord. I don't know. What are you thinking? Because I almost feel like I could do... Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. What are you thinking? I'm giving you the ownership. That's where my head was going. I'm right? giving you the ownership of the bar. I know Moochie, but I don't know Mochi enough. So I, I guess Moochie's going to be a server. Then if you don't want to be behind the bar, he, he's going to be our bar back. Our wait he's going to be a mascot. At this point, he's our mascot. Mascot. I cannot trust him with actual food or anything. I'll, I'll give Cody as uh, working in beer, very customer related and everything. Give yeah. him like the manager, main bartender type of job to go. Yeah. And then I do like, I think all of us are well enough. And if we had a lot of time, I think all of, well, Cody's not on. Uh, social medias anymore so between right. the three other of us i think all of us could tackle um <clears throat> the social media thing but I, i'd like to yeah i'd be a bartender i love talking to people i would love that hell yeah you're good at it you're very that, good at that wasn't to, to get a pat on my back i was just saying if we had I'm a just, bar but i'm not i'm just saying it you are very good at talking to people you're very easy to talk to so that makes sense uh, the social media aspect, I, I I agree with you on that. I mean, we could all throw together ideas and just make sure somebody's posting once a day, a couple times a day, uh, a lot better than what we do on the 40 year dash for our marketing. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of potential there. There's a lot of creativity between the four of us, not only that we could make this work somehow. We just cannot have Dan doing the concept of it. No, no, he, no. He's he the bar had, back. He, he's the bar back in the wait staff. <laughs> That's it. He could handle. He could take orders, and then I think he could definitely handle being a bar back. Uh, so we'll see. We'll, when we get there, we'll get there. Yeah, I feel like again more on that later. And, and you know what? I, you know, if I'm going to be in the owner position. I'm going to put a podcasting studio up top. Just so we have a place to record every Sunday morning. Yes. That's a great idea. And or if when when celebrities do come in, we can just run up there and get a clip with them right off the bat. Because we'll all exactly. well, everybody but Cody will know how to use the equipment. That's true. Because he's strong. Uh, <laughs> he does. Uh, listen to 40 Year Dash this week, you'll find out. Um, <laughs> where, I love you, Cody. Uh, but yeah, so we could get a snippet up there for our marketing. We could have them broadcast and say, hey, X, 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 X bar. This is Dr. Burke Baker, DMD, supporting XX bar, whatever it's going to be called. But, yeah, we, we have possibilities now. We do. We'll do. That's really not in the works, folks, so don't look on it anytime soon unless Jinx, yeah, don't. Unless Jinx wins a lottery. Uh. I was going to say, we need to win money first for that to even become a possibility. But. <laughs> and and we're looking for a cook. So send your applications to cancrusher69 at gmail.com and uh, we'll look at your applications of being a cook. It, it doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, if you can make ramen. You don't burn things. If you can make ramen, don't burn things. Uh, can't burn water. You're good. You're good. Dynamite time as we pandered long enough. And <laughs> AEW started hot, was awesome. 
And it didn't end that way. No, it did not. It ended with a car wreck. That was a love hub. And it, yeah. And not a good car wreck. Sometimes we like car wrecks. We like yeah. deathmatch stuff once in a while sprinkled in. We didn't. But let's talk about Dax and Cole. Unbelievable match. Damn, I wish this was the finals. I wish it was, too. Dax, oh, my God. Dax has come into his own as a singles performer. He's still part of FTR, but, man, he has come into his own. Cole was fantastic as normal, um, as expected. But, man, this match, it delivered better than I thought it would. And I thought it was going to deliver quite well. But this match oversaw it over exceeded my expectations it really did and that's why i said i wish it was the finals uh wanted either one to win could have built a story for either one to win Mm -hmm. but now i think there's only one story going forward there there can only be one yeah it's got to be cole and o'reilly and it's going to overshadow what they did in wwe Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And that's that's the only thing I can think of. Um, but man, they did great job. I also want to give props that you know Martha Hart was there. Owen Hart's uh, wife. She was there, and she seemed to be genuinely enjoying the show. Obviously, she's going to act like she's happy to be there and all that. But this, it, it was nice to see that, you know. After everything that happened, knowing the history between them and WWE, it was nice to see that excitement to be in a building, in a wrestling building, while taking in all that show. Yeah, because there was, I thought maybe a couple times they said, hey, get ready, you're going to be on, or something like that. And right. you have, because they went to her a few times. Yeah. And she had that smile, the, all right, I'm going to be on air smile. They went to her like two times that I don't think they said, hey, you're going to be on. And there was action in the ring. And unless she was watching the guy selling cotton candy or the beer guy or whatever, she seemed very enthralled, engaged of what was going on. She could have just made the, I'm here for the tournament, and then boom, I'm peacing out going back home. No, right. she when they caught her off guard a couple times, she really seemed invested in what was going on. So I do appreciate that. She did seem invested in, and when she noticed she was on camera, she put on that smile, that how you do smile. But yeah, she seemed very invested. Now I, I know she herself. Her, it was because of Owen she was with the business, but well, it was because of Owen she was with in the business through the business. I don't know. For me, it was more of a heartwarming. Hey, this is this is kind of a cool moment. Yeah, that we see. It's not necessarily healing over what happened, but it's at least something in the right direction. Yeah. So I agree. Uh, sidebar on this: the AEW games coming out. I, I think like late September and everything, and they finally. This was a couple weeks ago, so this is how far I'm behind on video games for wrestling. <laughs> they did announce that Owen's going to be in the game. So he did. Yeah, I'm ex- I'm excited for that. I can't wait. I can't either. I cannot wait. Uh, I wish you would have the pre-order out pretty soon because I'm going to buy the most expensive pre-order that you possibly can. It's just... I'm considering it too because A, Owen's in the game. B, it's an AEW game. And C, I have high expectations for it. I do too. I do too. Even though Omega says he really hated working with Jukes. Jukes. You, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know. I just I love those graphics. It brings me back to WrestleMania 2000 and NWO versus WCW. That whole graphics. Those are my favorite graphics of wrestling games ever. I love those. Yeah, I love them. Yep. Uh, Hangman's on commentary for Punk against Johnny. W- w- come on, we knew it was going to happen. Uh, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> we knew it was going to happen. I was surprised though with the buckshot lariat. To. To mess with uh, Hangman there. I don't know why I forgot Hangman's page, but that was that a was nice twist. I didn't see that. that. Nice twist. Yeah, uh, the Buckshot Larry was a nice little twist on the match. Also, I just love that new Long Island will not let Punk forget that they hate him and hate his ever loving guts. And to me, that was hilarious. They well, cut the music during it during his entrance because of it. They did. Um... <laughs> 
that's what I have to bitch about because there was a couple segments okay. in, in, in between. Did they not know that Punk was going to wear one out to get the crowd pissed off, and then MJF wears it to make the crowd happy? Uh, if, if there was one thing, I'm like, there's too many jerseys going on on the show tonight. Because Britt wore one out then too, didn't she? Yeah, she wore a penguin one out. Penguins one out. Clearly, then that was to get yeah. the crowd. I always thought pissed. the heel wears one. Like anytime I remember DX coming to State College, they would wear an Ohio State one, if they, or whoever they were playing, because normally they came around college football time. They would yeah. wear, you know, the the other school that they're playing, and they're, oh, I fucking hate these guys. Bah, 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 bah. I I don't remember seeing. And I know. Max is the heel, but he's from there. And I understand all the references of why he would. It was his own personal jersey, this, that, and the other. I don't I'm just digging too deep into this. I understand that. But you had to have known Punk was gonna wear one out. So why or is that setting something up for down the line? Ah. It could it's be a setting subtle up setup. Down the line. Yeah. It it could be. Uh, it could leave the door wide open. I think for Punk, it was... See, with this whole storyline with Paige, I don't know who the heel is and who's not. Or if they're even going... Because they're both acting as one to get the title, right? Or retain the title. So to me, I feel like Punk was... I don't think it was an appeasement. I think he was just poking the crowd because he knew what he was going to get out of them. Right. He knew he was going to get a visceral reaction out of them. So I, I'm just confused by the whole page punk dynamic because they're both playing the heel card in some aspects. And I just don't, I think that's playing into some confusion here. MJF was going to pander. He was in the greatest city in the world, in his opinion of long Island. So he was going to embrace the love and the only city he gets the love from. And then you look at Brit, she was playing up the penguins thing. I think it's Penguins Rangers though that were playing, not the Penguins the Islanders. But she, but she had to get the New York hate, yeah, which I get. Um, I, I just don't know what I, I don't know what Punk's end game was with the jersey, besides getting a visceral reaction, right? Yeah, that's it. To me, that was it. Yeah, I, I but, mean, it, but to to that point though, why? Why did he need that visceral reaction? I think they're trying to make him the heel in this match, but I think there's going to be, if he's going in to the 29th as so far the heel, I think there's a double switch. I think you see Paige, and you brought it up, uh, I don't know if it was last week or a week before, that we think, because you've completely convinced me, that Paige is going to be the one going with the Bullet Club. Yeah, And you see this little change every week of Paige being more snotty, more blah, 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 whatever you want to say it. So I, I think I think they, they're in a clash between these two because, all right, Punk's supposed to be the bad guy, especially there that night. But it you want him to be back to face when the next pay-per-view comes around and he's defending against... MJF of when that storyline comes right back. I, I think the, the dynamic of the jerseys was, I just saw this jersey. Oh, shit, Punk was wearing it. Oh, he was making fun of them. It, again, it's wrestling. We dive too much into it sometimes. I think that was just that little subtle line to keep MJF and Punk connected so that feud can rehash itself. And then we get MJF as champion. Because we both yeah. said that Punk is transitional. We did. And he was going to get it at some point. I think that could be the buildup. But does Punk get it this early? Because I feel like if they're going to give it to MJF, it's not going to be on TV. It'll be on a pay-per-view. Your next pay-per-view isn't until All Out in September. So, or unless they're doing the switch at Forbidden Door between Punk and AJ, MJF. Uh, I hopefully hopefully not in a triangle match like WCW in <laughs> Starcade '95, but 
Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I, do. I just don't. I, I, do. I just. I, I, how do you extend it out for three months? Because I feel like maybe they're going to let it. New theory. Correct me if I'm wrong. Page turns into the Bullet Club at Double or Nothing, retains the title against Punk. You get the double switch. They extend that program through until late July, and then he drops the title to Punk for a month. And who loses the MJF at that time? Because then that gives MJF time to lose the Wardlow and rebuild himself up as a number one contender at that point. Yeah. It, I, I don't know if I'm sold on either. Full yeah. heartedly, uh, yeah. But th- I, that's just where my head went. Is you mentioned double turn, and I could very well see that, and I believe that for double or nothing. So where is it? Uh, doubles in the name, so that would be <laughs> perfect timing, I guess. But when does it happen? I think that could be your most plausible solution. Now that I said it, it's not going to happen. Right, Tony's going to say, "Well, they know too much. Than, they know too much," and then I'm probably just going to get taken out or something. But uh yeah so i don't think i don't know man i think a double turn would make sense that they're building it up that way if the double turn happens it has to be with the bullet club involved i think yeah i i, I, don't I, think, I would agree I, with that 100 percent. yeah yeah i just don't think punk could turn i don't think page could turn without the bullet club to help sell the turn uh, as we look at forbidden door down the line i don't see titles being on the line or any, I think it's, this is just essentially the world cup from 95 done, maybe right or done better or done something. Um, I I think we're going to see a lot of that storylines coming out of it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because then you're going to have, I I think you can intertwine people doing stuff, but I think I I don't want to say this is WrestleMania-esque, that it's setting up storylines for way down the line, because there's already way down the line stories built into AEW. I just think this gets some of the mid-card people, you know, fluctuating here or there, kind of a reset, if that makes sense. No, it does. And I feel like we're going to get not only singles with mid-card people, but we're going to get a couple tag matches, because I think you're going to end up... I really think the final match of this whole thing this is what it should what I think it should be. Undisputed Elite versus Bullet Club. Because yeah. there's so much story built into there. You could do Cole in the box versus whoever you want from the Bullet Club, whether it's Gallows and Anderson and um or whoever's in the Switch Bullet Club Blade. now. But Switchblade, Juice. Um you could you could do multiple things there to make that work. Yeah. Again, we don't know. We don't know. It's oh. it's been a week. Hey, Mark, real quick. Hey, Go Jinx, this, what? <laughs> I just saw this note because I was I have results pulled up so I can kind of look through them again. There's a note that said when Punk entered with the Islanders jersey, it was a John the player was John Tavares, who had left the team already to play for Ma- the Maple Leafs. So he was wearing a jersey of a player that had turned his back on the city of New York a few years earlier. So I don't know if that adds more dimension. It adds more dimension to it as he, either New York turned its back on Punk or vice versa with the Tavares thing. I thought that was an interesting call out to make note of. Yeah, from what I was seeing here, I great catch, great catch. Yeah. You've been reading that because I, uh, I don't know hockey as much as I know the others, so I, I would have thought Tavares was still on the team. I no clue. So that's yeah, that makes sense. I do want to know the backstory of that though. Now, did he did he say "f New York" and I'm going to Toronto, or did New York say eh, "you're long in the tooth, get away from us"? If I'm correct, and I don't know if I am because I'm not as well versed in hockey. I know some things about hockey, but not the storyline stuff that goes into it. I think Toronto and the Islanders are pretty heated. Yeah rivals in that aspect so i think him turning his back and just leaving for toronto was an fu to the city of new york that's like babe ruth going to the yankees exactly the city of boston it's an fu yeah i don't know contract signing um i wanted more i wanted less i got enough i i don't know where i am with this i still wanted 
and we both do a Wardlow beatdown from uh, the mensch on the sense or the what the hell do you call him? Oh God, yeah, whatever it was. Uh, the mensch I, of the sense. Yeah, the sense, yeah, yeah, the, like yeah, yeah, yeah. MJF had the crowd in his hands. They were eating it. They were just eating it alive. That's how good he is. Yeah. They, it just, I don't know. But now we're getting more, I guess, the labors of war, though, coming up here. We are. We are. But The last two. But we, we said this last week with Morrissey should have been the one to beat him down. Yeah. There was 150 security guards. And if I miscounted, there was 300. I don't know. <laughs> How could they not? And I understand you're building Wardlow up. You you are. Uh, he's going to take the lashes like I eat cupcakes. He's going to be fine with them. Yeah. The Spears thing is going to screw him over. I still think he's going to get the win. This that. I mean, we're getting to Wardlow and MGF without a doubt. This was another opportunity to leave him laying and make him look weak, and they didn't. They made, no. essentially, made MJF look weak again. He's got to be built up at least once, or I have no couth in MJF being a person that's going to attempt to beat Wardlow. The only time it's going to look like MJF's going to get the upper hand is right before the pay-per-view with the steel cage, because he's the guest referee, and Spears is going to be in there. That might be the only time that happens. But Wardlow's got to get the win in that. He's got to. Does he though? Or it, it, doesn't he have to beat him to get to MJF? No, I don't think he has to. Beat oh, he just him. has to be in a match. To, okay, I may be misunderstood. Be okay, I thought it was he just needed to take the lashes, and then he just needs to be in the match. He, he has to face Sean Spears. I don't think it was ever said that he had to win the match. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, then that makes sense. I'm all right with that. Quick count. You know, they're, then they're going to pummel him, leave him laying. All right. Yeah. I, as much as I don't want to, we need to see Wardlow bloodied, laying, you know, just beaten and broken once. And Mama it Wardlow, you have to find something of old school or make sure Mama Wardlow is at the event and just crying into the camera yeah. about her son. You need yeah. all of that sympathy then. Build up the sympathy for the match to get the most out of the match. Yeah. As well. Yep. Oh, by the way, I uh, love that Sean Spears got to do the perfect 10 gimmick again. <laughs> Just formed my heart. Did it really? I I enjoyed it. I thought. Okay. I was like, uh, once he stopped at nine, I thought, oh, here it comes. I was yep. on the yep. other end. Oh, my God. Uh, see, I, I, I found it great. I thought. So it's the little things for me, I guess. When's Christian turning on Jurassic Express? Because that's. My next big question. As soon as they lose the titles? Yeah. Double or nothing? Yeah. He, is think... he the reason they lose the titles? He could be the reason. Taz could pay him off. Or whoever wins this match. It looks like it's going to be a triple threat now. With Keith Lee and Strickland involved. And Team Taz. I would not be opposed to Starks and Hobbs winning this match. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. I am still not on the Swerve and Lee fan boat yet. Yeah, I'm don't not know why. I, I, it just feels thrown together. It doesn't feel like an actual team to me. Yeah, I I agree. Whoever wins this transition transition champion, the, these guys are not keeping it long. Maybe a couple weeks. Maybe you get a month of dark matches or something. There's other teams ready to get out of uh, storylines to take over. And I'm not just saying Santana and Ortiz, because I will push them until they get it. But you're not going to see the Bucks, that's for sure. They're they're into the for- forbidden door. But maybe FTR rolls back around. Uh, there, there's just other teams. Yeah, I, I, I don't see how you can get pumped for Starks and Hall being your tag team champion. Less, yeah. even less, Lee and Swerve. Right. I, 
I think in my, I, I'm still thinking this because I think I mentioned a couple weeks ago. At some point, I think Cash is going to walk into the sunset, and I think FTR is going to get one more title reign with them as almost the swan song because there's just some the way they're building this it just feels to me that cash is going to retire this arm injury is a lot worse than we're thinking um that he took last year i i just feel like it's this year is the swan song for ftr they're building up dax in more of a singles capacity yes they have these tag titles i think they get the aew once one last time and then they move forward with maybe cash in the corner of Dax going forward. I don't know. It, it just, ha- it, it, for some reason, it just sits on me that that's the case going forward right now. Yeah. I And I said that for the last month you've been saying this, and I agree with you. Yeah. Um, the rest, before we get to the main event, the society was, I don't know. I thought it was stupid. I, I it just doesn't get to me. We did forget to talk about Dan House and, and Nice. It, it was three seconds, so <laughs> yeah, we did yeah. forget to talk about that. You're gonna get Hookhausen now. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, whatever. Uh, I was disappointed that Dan Housen really didn't have a match. He didn't get yeah. to see. He's a great performer. He didn't do the Pee Wee Herman thing when he came to the ring. Uh, like it, this first thing for Danhausen pissed me off because he didn't get his whole shtick. So if right. you don't know Danhausen from the Indies and you don't know what he can do, don't judge a book by his cover in that first match because, well, putrid. Yeah, it wasn't even a match. It wasn't even close to what he could do. So hopefully in the future he gets something more. But I, I want to circle back here, though. You did not like the – which part of the Appreciation Society segment did you not like? Was it all of it? I just – we're getting too many celebrations from anything that Jericho is involved with. Okay. That's – and again, it's three on two. <laughs> or it's five on two. Or that it, I need something – to grasp on to. And I still didn't get it yet. Even though Danielson, Regal, and uh, Mox came out. I just... Where are we going with this? What team are we going to get? What? Why are they invested now? I, I guess that we didn't have time for them to talk. That, that's understandable. Cool. What? What is coming to this? I... Why not just interfere in a match? Because they're getting their ass beat. Why do you have to do it during a celebration? <clears throat> I just I don't think, I don't think this was for me. My mindset just wasn't why. I bought it in immediately when Mox music hit, and it's not because of the BCC getting involved. It's because of the history between Mox and Kingston, and we know they're friends. So to me, I relied on that history to say oh, Mox is coming out to defend Kingston's honor. And then we found out later that it was an actual trap that was laid on the JAS. I agree with you that the appreciation, the Jackass Society is doing way too many celebrations. But again, this is a sports entertainment wizard angle that they're doing with this whole thing. But I just tied it back to Mox and Kingston, good friends. They have each other's backs. Yes, they're in two separate fa- type of factions right now, even though Kingston, Ortiz, and Santana aren't really a faction at the moment. Um, but it buys in for me, and it buys in for me that Danielson and Yuta and Regal would follow Mox out. I also, I don't think, I can't remember if it was you, Mark. I think it might have been Cody that I was talking to, reminded me Yuta's gone to New Japan. During Double or Nothing weekend. So he's doing, he's out for three weeks, two or three weeks. So it really goes Moxley Danielson and Moxley and Danielson joining Ortiz, Santana, and Kingston. It's leading up to a Blood and Guts match at some point to me. This whole Regal Jericho situation that's going to come up next week, 
is going to be re Regal yelling war games or blood and guts or whatever, however they want to yell it. I just think this is going to be, this is just leading up to that match and they're just using Moxley and Danielson in it. Okay. I, I can that's wrap that back my, around. No, I can wrap that back around. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's kind of where my head went. And actually, I didn't even think about the Yuta thing, that Yuta's leaving. Uh, I forgot about Yuta leaving. So this would give them something to do for the next couple of weeks. Moxley and Danielson and the Blackpool, Blackpool Combat Club. Yeah, because you need them on that pay per view as well. So you do need them on you need them on a pay per view, and I think also it's better than them fighting just random trios that they've been rolling out for the past couple of weeks. Yeah, how the uh, private party and me or yeah, you, exactly you and Butcher and the Blade. Yeah, I, yeah, right. All right, uh, hopefully they pull me in. I, I'm excited for the I, Regal Jericho thing. I believe he's going to get punched in the face again. I agree with that. Yeah. And here comes the hate. Wait, now wait a minute. Are you playing a pun here? <laughs> no, I'm not You're playing. Forgetting a... One mat. You're forgetting a match though. Storm, Storm, Storm and Jamie oh, Hater. Storm and Hater. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. It was good. It, it was good. It was good. It was a hard hitting affair. Yeah. I think we both knew what the outcome was going to be here. But, but I would have liked the other. I would have too. Because then it sets up once Britt beats the Joker. Because clearly, with what they did beforehand, it, it doesn't matter who the hell they roll out as the Joker. They've already bit, built Brit up to winning. They essentially yeah. spoiled it. The Brit's beating the Joker. Brit, who you could face one of these two next round. Yeah. Are uh, I don't think they should have done that. So I think the Joker is going to be. I don't know. Maybe it's going to be the Bunny. Maybe I mean I nothing against Alley. But it, it's going to be somebody that Britt runs rough shot through, I think. No, agreed. It's going to be a very easy match for her, and no disrespect to whoever it's going to be. It's not going to I be also, Sheeta. No, it's not. Sheeta's injured. Not really injured, but injured. She didn't know she was injured. Uh, she didn't know it either. She had to put out an apology. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the other thing to that flip side, Mark, though, is did you notice that they had a plan in place, her and Rebel, it looked like, by just body language that if hater gets through that they would make sure that Britt won. Yeah. So there's a lot there's a lot of underlying things going on here. So when does that come on to play? Because we've been speculating that for months too. When is it hater and Britt? That's now playing into it. So how are hate how is Britt and Adam Cole gonna celebrate when they both win <clears throat> the the Owen Hart. They're going to go out to Bar Rescue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that episode was supposed to wait to air. Uh, but no, I don't know. I don't know how you go and celebrate that. It'll be a shock if anybody else wins. I'll just put it that way. The, 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 there's my predictions. It's going to be a shock if anybody else wins from here on out. Agreed. Yeah, because I, I just don't see anybody else. I also think, spoilers for next week, Joe is eliminated in the first round by the Joker. Yeah, Because oh, yeah. I don't think he's getting past the Joker. No. No, Especially no, no. with uh, uh, Lethal and Dutt, and I can't remember the other guy's name. The big the tall guy. guy's name. The big, the guy. big guy. Yeah. The big guy. Yeah. All right. Hey, time. <sighs> Jeff Hardy and Darby Allen in the Owen Hart Foundation tournament turns out to be just fuck yourself up match. I knew what this match was going to end up being. And I stayed awake on Wednesday to watch everything until this started. I was not invested whatsoever. I didn't care who won. Uh, I figured it was going to be Darby because we talked about last week of at least a pillar moving on. Apparently Jeff won. Yeah. Uh, yeah, rolled him up. I watched some of it. I didn't watch all of it. I... I read notes, I didn't pay attention to notes. It was too much. Too much. You took not even your career. You took uh, years off your life. Yeah. I am one to watch a blood and guts match. You know, I don't mean the, the match self, but I mean like where you get blood and guts and you get a death match and stuff like that. I am one to watch that. 
That's all Hardy has done since he's come into AEW. Mm-hmm. I know that's Darby's stick, but he can wrestle a match every once in a while. Yeah. I fucking hated this. I outright hated this. I just lost interest fast. You're setting up 900 chairs on the outside. The ladder's taller than the building. You know something's going to happen. You know something bad's probably going to happen from it. I I just... Th- this wasn't good. I mean, people rave for it. It didn't connect with me. This wasn't what Owen was about. No. Every other match they've had for the Owen Hart thing has been... I don't want to say all of them have been technical, but there's at least shots in it. Yeah. Ah, no. I hated this. This would probably be, as of right now, my least favorite match of the year. Yeah, I gotta agree. As soon as they announce it, anything goes, I'm like, ah, I did not want to hear that. And they just made terrible, terrible life-altering decisions Jumping off of a ladder onto a pile of chairs? Are you kidding me? The, was it the swanton onto the steel step? The jumping, the coffin up on the apron, which I know he's done before, but God, that, so many things that just did not, it didn't need to happen. There no. was no reason for this. They, were, they took their lives into their own hands here for no reason whatsoever. This was not what this tournament was about. I... I was solely disappointed that they decided to turn it into a car crash, a daredevil thing. Have a normal match the first time out. Have the biggest moment of the match be the coffin drop on the apron. We've seen Darby do that in matches before. If you want to have a blow-off match, build up to it. But this was like, let's just go destroy each other and make sure we can't walk when we're 55. It, It was stupid. It was a stupid match. Yeah, agreed. I'm done with it. I am too. I, uh, disappointment. I, I hope Owen's wife left prior to this match. That's how much I, I hated it. Too. I really yeah, do. There was too many things that I, that latter spot was too much for me in a tournament dedicated to somebody who passed away in that manner. And similar manner. I shouldn't say to the latter, but no, but essentially, yeah. Yeah. On the Rampage, Jenks, I didn't get a lot from Rampage. I, I really, the Death Triangle, Butcher Blade, Quinn thing, you knew at one point the House of Black was going to show up. They literally just did a pop in and bailed. Yeah. I like the Butcher okay. and the Blade. I wish they would get away from using them in trios matches and let them be a mid card team. They are not a mid card team. No, they're not. I think they just need to be built up better. I think they have potential to be something more, but they have to build them up that way instead of feeding them to the wolves every couple of weeks. And, you know, and next week they'll be against the House of Black and the Death Triangle. Yeah. I mean, essentially, I'm excited for when this trios match happens. I, I want to see it, this, that, and the other. We need to get there. There's some stories that are just lingering a little bit too long for being mid-card stories. This is one of them. And I understand, yes, a big paper is coming up, and that's going to blow off. Da, 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 da. Let's move it along. Sometimes just promos are okay. In fact, yeah. Pac has had, or the bastard has had the best promos in a while. Ones. Yeah. yeah. Just let them talk. Let them be demented on screen once in a while. That's all we want. They could talk for the next three weeks, Mark. Yeah. The double or nothing, and I'd be fine with that. Yeah. Because I don't need Spears against Bear Boulder. <laughs> you don't? I do not. Who doesn't? Who doesn't need Spears or Bear Boulder? <laughs> uh, we find out that Mark Sterling's actually in the match with Nice. Essentially, he's yeah. going to be one taking the loss. So hopefully, it's to Danhausen, but it's going to be Hook. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Which. I guess they have to protect Nice for the hook match. Okay. Or, yeah, the hook match eventually, but... Uh... Yeah. Uh, Riho and Ro- Ruby, I was shocked by this. Happy shocked that 
Ruby is advancing. I didn't think. I thought, oh, man, they're going to have Ruby lose to Riho. Ruby's really getting... I mean, it, what does she do in the next round? I don't know. We'll see. But I was happy Ruby at least got a win. I was. I was, too. I Because it just seems like she loses those bigger matches. She just loses those matches. That means something. So to see her finally get a win, it warms the old, old cockles. heart. The old cockles. The old heart. But, yeah, I was happy for Ruby getting a match here. Because I, I just didn't... I also didn't see Rio winning, but I also could have seen them just giving them one to Rio. Just because. Just be- but, Yeah, just because. Yeah. Well, the Gun Club and Acclaimed are kind of a faction. That'll be fucking segments that I don't watch every week. <laughs> God, I hate both of them. <laughs> I hate the Gun Club, for sure. The Acclaim's growing on me. I can't... They're good in the ring. They're good on the mic. I can't hate them too much, but I can't stand the Gun Club. And this isn't staying together for too long, because Billy no. Gunn's going to go against his boys and go with the Acclaimed. It. He didn't yeah. like anything that Colton said, but he loved everything that Caster said. The writing's on the wall for this to be a blow-off, hopefully in weeks. Yeah, agreed. What else did we have? Uh, Jade coming out and, and whatever. But we get to Sky and Kazarian. You said it last week. I said, yes, I agree. Sky is making the turn real quick. And yeah. the, it's, it's going to be said and done. And I'm okay with that. I think he... He is a dick. He can be a dick, and I mean it wrestling-wise. Um, I think the fans want to love him. And mm-hmm. and being with Huskis Lambert and Paige, who Paige is great bad. Ethan Page, that is. Yeah. Um, I think they could do more without Sky, and Sky definitely does more without them. Yeah, agreed. I I think it's just two t- two guys. They don't need to be together per se. They can be separate. They can do their own thing. And in a way, Mark, I think it's kind of limiting the both. Or they have to, they both limit each other, even though they both can be exceptional heels faces. They limit each other just because of the dyna- the dynamic of it all. Let me say this to you, though. Ethan Page is going to be the one taking the title off of Scorpio Sky. Oh, I agree. I did, I'm not disagreeing that. I think Ethan Page is the one to take it off of him. I think there's a turn, and then Ethan Page takes it off the sky. Yeah. And I want this. Tr- I want this mix match to uh, match over with too. Done and over. Yeah. Hopefully soon. Like I'm a huge fan of Sammy, but man, he just needs to get away from this and be Sammy. I don't know if I want. Maybe he goes to the Jericho Society. I don't know. He. He kind of still needs somebody for me, I think, to lead him yeah. his way. No, I agree with that. I guess just who do you think it would be for that aspect, though? You. I don't know right now. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be that good at it, but we'll see. I don't know. Uh, a shot in the dark. So, yeah. That's all I got. What do you got? I got nothing. I got nothing. I'm going to be interesting to see how everything builds out for Double or Nothing in the coming weeks. I know. I know. So, as of right now, uh, if you just fast forwarded to the end for no apparent reason, um, as of right now, tentatively, there's not going to be a show next week. Again, I will be being the cameraman for IWC Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. Unless Jenks and I want to skip Rampage and SmackDown and maybe record Thursday or mid-Friday, I we don't know yet. It's something we can talk about. Um, or just take a break. For the love of God, it's okay to take breaks and rejuvenate and everything. I will promise you we will be back on the 29th for sure. We'll make our double or nothing picks. Um, uh, we would like for you guys to get them in. Uh, send them via email. Send them via however. Have Cody come on, maybe chat with us a little bit for the predictions as well, and just uh, have a nice rebound, I guess. Yeah. Recover from the week off, and we'll see where we're going. Yeah, I could be dead because Bulk Nasty. 
yeah, the camera fell on me. Balk Nasty doesn't like the way that I'm filming him. I don't know. Ward, uh, no, Wardlow. Rhino could spear me. I could get caned in the head by Sandman. I don't know what I'm going to expect here next weekend in essentially the Pittsburgh area. I just feel like somebody's going to steal your camera and use it on somebody else. So that's my prediction for what's going to happen. I hope it's me. Just, you're going to be an accessory. I'm going to get punched and then somebody's going to steal my camera. And then you're going to get gored by Rhino. <laughs> Somebody better be taping this. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to be. Somebody better at least yeah. get a picture of me, like, gored out of one shoe, laying like I'm, I would hit by a train or something. Yeah. Yes. We'll see. We'll see. And you'll be able to watch all we'll of that there. on the IWC. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, More we'll on that there. later. <laughs> you'll be able to watch all of that great footage on the IWC network for only nine ninety nine a month. Uh, check it out. Yeah. Purchase now. Purchase now. Jenks, I love you. I love you, too. Enjoy the rest of your day, uh, whatever you're, you guys were cooking up a storm, doing whatever. Enjoy yourself. Give your girlfriend a hug from me and just uh, love life. I will. You, too. Uh, enjoy the ice cream this afternoon because I think you guys are going to get ice cream, right? Or no? Yes. Or am I making that up? Yeah, no. Get some ice cream. <laughs> yes. Enjoy it. After my we have an interview coming up here in about oh, an hour cool. and a half. But, yeah, after that. Yes, ice cream time. <laughs> I'll enjoy it. Remember, guys, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Boop, boop. Boop, boop.